Tyrese Halliburton, man. Woo! Ah, made me so happy last night. Uh, obviously, here the game ended at like midnight, pretty much. Uh, and yeah, I went to sleep pretty satisfied with this and the Giants winning in baseball, but you're not here to listen to that. Maybe you're not here to listen to that at all. Uh, maybe you are, actually. Maybe you care about me more than the basketball, which might make sense. Anyway, the Pacers uh, beat the Knicks in Game 7 in the MS Madison Square Garden, as I predicted. I talked about it, uh, and I'm happy that I did. Uh, I did not foresee it happening this way, but it did. So let me first and foremost say, yeah, the Knicks injuries obviously played a huge part in this. And this game was like the nail on the calf coffin right with the Jalen Brunson fractured hand. It's tough, but I want to first talk about the Pacers and then we'll get to the Knicks and their side of the story. Uh, but the energy the Pacers came, came in with uh, was just contagious and absurd, right? They were making every fucking shot. They, sh they shot at the end of this game 67% from the field. And in the first half, they shot 76%. 76% for a whole half, which is absolutely insane. And everyone came in shot ready, right? Pascal Siakam early on with his mid-range jumpers and his assertiveness. He was absolutely sensational early on in this game. And I love that they went to him a little more in the post, obviously, with Josh Hart being compromised, OG Anobi being compromised. It was a little easier. Uh, and I love that they gave him some more mid-range, you know, mid-range operating room, which I was really happy to see. Tyrese shot lights out four three-pointers in the first quarter and he was talking crazy to the fan who was poking, poking the bear, as they say, right? Uh, and the, the Pacers were just making anything. Obviously, the Knicks looked a little defeated. They looked tired. They looked overwhelmed. They looked like a team that had too many injuries, that uh, had been playing, you know, throughout the season too many minutes and it caught up to them. But the Pacers attacked relentlessly. They were sensational attacking, closeouts attacking the rim. Uh, shooting was absolutely absurd, right? They could not miss from mid-range, from three-point range. I mean, obviously, when they shot 67%, not much you can do. Uh, I would say the defense of the Knicks wasn't impressive, but uh, the shot-making was still the more impressive things, right? You still have to make those shots, no matter the defense. And the Pacers were just locked in from everywhere on the court offensively. Uh, they had few hiccups, few turnovers. But even when uh, the Knicks went on a run in the third quarter, they weathered the storm, forced some turnovers with their active defense, which I thought was really good today. And, hey, got the lead back to double digits and never looked back. Uh, and with the way they were shooting and playing, there was no chance. The Knicks just ran out of gas. And you saw it, for example, Isaiah Hartenstein had a really bad offensive game and had some really lazy turnovers. Uh, Jalen Brunson looked tired and obviously he got hurt later. Uh, and OG Anobi was out there on... I don't know who the fuck greenlit him to play, but they should be arrested, man. The OG Anobi had no way business of being there, even though he made those two insane shots early on. Uh, and it was Dante DiVincenzo and Alec Burks just saving the Knicks from obviously getting blown up on like 50. Uh, Dante was sensational, so shout out to him. He was the offensive lifeline until Alec Burks came in and gave them something. Uh, but the Knicks just didn't have it at the end of the day. Uh, they were smaller. Uh, they weren't able to keep up with the pace. And they obviously were injured. And I, I still want to just say this. This was more about the Pacers just, you know, being ready for the moment. Game 7 in MSG. Everyone expecting, you know, the Knicks to go to the conference finals. Obviously, that's more pressure on them. But... You know, nobody expects the Pacers to do shit. They have no experience besides Pascal Siakam. Uh, and they came into the garden just looking like, yeah, we're the better team and we should be winning. We should have already been in the conference finals. And they showed out like that. Uh, TJ McConnell is a menace still. Uh, and I'm so happy that Tyrese just played like this. Obviously, a lot of talk on Twitter about showboating and stuff. Just enjoy the goddamn. I mean, obviously, if you're a Knicks fan, you're going to be annoyed at Tyrese, which obviously makes sense, but I thought, you know, uh, nobody fucking talks when they're ass, right? Uh, uh, so the showboating stuff or the front runner stuff has lost its meaning a bit. Uh, and to me, everyone talk, talks about the Knicks being tough, which they obviously are, but to me, they are a little bit of a fake bully. 
in some ways, right? They get away with a lot because of, you know, the perceived perception of them as a tough team. And I, I was happy to see them out. Obviously not in this way. I would much rather see them lose to the Pacers full strength, which I don't know if that would have happened. We guess we'll never know that. Uh, but I, I would bet that it would be a seven game series either way, even if the Knicks were fully healthy, honestly. I would bet that it would be a really close series in a way. Of course, this series was... Uh, you know, we had only the first two games that were somewhat close. So there's that. But we'll see how the Pacers can deal with Boston. We'll see if they can find a way to uh, you know, ra- run, run as fast against the Celtics as they can here. But the Celtics have obviously bigger bodies. They can switch better. Uh, they are, you know, a three-point shooting team that... It's just light, so they can force turnovers on the Pacers. They should have a rebounding advantage. Yeah, they can post up really well, which I think, uh, you know, the post up, a post up player was something that was missing for the Knicks, which obviously would have been Julius Randle. Uh, of course, Jalen Brunson can post up, but obviously a big man I'm talking about. Um, but we'll see, man. We'll see what the Pacers do. I don't know. I have a read on the series. Uh, I think they can hang on with the Celtics. The question is. Uh, defensively. I mean, they looked better in these playoffs defensively, especially at home, but you know, can Tyrese be you know, a good point of attack defender? Uh, <coughs> how will Miles Turner protect the rim? Uh, you know, he is not a great rebounder, unfortunately, and he showed it this series, so can he be a better rebounder? He did have four blocks today, which are impressive, but he's not like uh, you know, not a great rebounder and pretty much just a shot blocker. Uh, even though in you know this series he was a better in protector overall, so that is that. Uh, can Pascal Siakam be aggressive offensively and get his game off against the Celtics? Who uh, I guess they'll have Tatum on him. I gotta look at the games that were played before uh, between these two teams. If they played when Siakam was acquired, I'm not sure. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't know. Maybe not actually because obviously Tyrese was hurt. So I don't think these two teams. Uh, played at full strength against each other, honestly. And the Celtics are not even at full strength, of course. Uh, but I guess you're gonna see Tatum on Siakam. Could Pascal Siakam go at Tatum in the post? Maybe. We'll see what happens there. Miles Turner against Al Horford is an intriguing matchup. But I guess I'll talk about that tomorrow once I look into this a little more. Uh, anyway, I'm just so happy for the Pacers. They showed out 67% from the field. Uh... The, the confidence, the energy they showed yesterday was sensational. Everyone showed up, essentially. Uh, everyone did a little bit of their thing. They passed the ball incredibly well. They were unselfish. They were knocking down everything. Beautiful thing to see. And uh, shout out to the Knicks for their great season, of course. Uh, I got a little sour on them towards this end because I was rooting for the Pacers. And because uh, as tough as they are, they can be a, l- a little tough to watch from time to time. But still a great season. The problem is, and I'll talk about this in another video, the Thibodeau problem, of course, or how will the Knicks actually get better, right? Uh, if they continue to do the same, uh, even if they acquire someone else, uh, what is the chance that, you know, second round, third round, all of the players start to go down again? What is the chance of that with, you know, obviously tips teams? A lot. That is a huge chance of that. So we'll see. Anyway, that was it for game seven here. And I'll be talking about Denver, Minnesota also, obviously. And then game one is on Tuesday. So we have a day off tonight. Uh, uh, And I'll maybe talk about, you know, series preview. We'll see. And uh, or my just general thoughts um, on the next series. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, thank you all for watching, for listening. Um, we are in for a really, I would say, really cool matchups. Hopefully the Pacers can show up against the Celtics, obviously. We'll see. But, um, yeah, I'm excited. I'll be here to cover it as always. And, yeah. Um, I don't know, man. Be kind to others. Love yourselves as much as possible. Uh, be graceful and stand on your morals. View the world from a love and compassionate way, and the world will love you back. Okay, maybe not, but hopefully it will.